takes us through the true potential of a green building. Before we get into the green ideas, let us see why we need green buildings. Building and the construction sector consumes almost 40% of the energy generated in the world. 40% of the solid waste generated in this world is from building and construction sector, resulting in 40% of the global greenhouse gas emissions are from the building and the construction sector. So, buildings going green is essential and imperative. The 21st modern century, 21st century modern green building movement has been kick-started by constructing our own center, IGBC's headquarters building in Hyderabad in India, as a modern green building, a modern green building. In fact, it is a proud moment for all of us when this building got the world's greenest building title in year 2003. Having said that, if you see an, a conservative estimate of uh, India's history, it minimum dates back to 6,000 years old history. So, to be more honest with you all, green buildings are not new to India. Some of the buildings, like especially the places of worship, like a temple or a church or a mosque or a gurudwara, which has been constructed even before air conditioners. Why air conditioners? Even before electricity was invented, they're all green actually. So traditionally for ages, the entire built environment in India is always much greener and much sustainable. But nevertheless, the 21st century has thrown open a lot of challenges to all of us here in India as well as away from India. So the green building is the only way forward to address all these challenges on bringing down the emissions, bringing down the waste generated, preserving the fast depleting finite resources. So when we started the journey, people used to ask us, you are talking about a green building. If I paint my house with a green color paint, or if I fit a green colored glass on my house, can I call it as a green building? So we do love the color of green, but a green building goes beyond a color of a paint or a color of a glass. So that is why we from Indian Green Building Council has defined what is green? A green building is the one which conserves natural resources, which uses less water, which optimizes energy efficiency, which generates less waste. Last but not the least is provides healthiest space for every single citizen on this planet Earth. So like what we have five fingers in our palm, the green building movement has enabled architects and every individual sitting in this room and watching this presentation, a beautiful opportunity for an integrated design and a holistic approach. Like what we have five fingers in our palm, we have to address the site-related concern, the water, energy, materials, and indoor environmental quality. So the moment we started the journey in 2001, it was very revealing for us our own great-great-grandfathers, thousands and thousands of years ago, they have discovered the significance of the five elements, what I said a minute ago. However modern we are today, we may be using an iPad and waiting for the iPhone 8 to come. But nevertheless, we in India, before starting any activity, we worship, spiritually we worship these five elements. What we call it is an earth, water, fire, air, and sky. So green buildings are not new to India. So having set the tone, let us share some of the ideas what we have done across the country in many projects, many projects in India. So to start with, to have a house or to have an office, we need a site, correct? So how sustainable is going to be our site? So the green buildings, the number one green idea here is, these are all built designed and built around the environment, not against. For example, the moment you get a site, it may have a flora and fauna or a well-grown tree. In a conventional building, many a times we don't care about these resources. Whereas in the green building, as you could see it in this slide, Hyderabad, it is only known for biryanis, pearls, and Golconda fort. Now it is known for natural rocks also. As you are able to see, our own site was fully loaded with natural rocks. Our own architects and designers have been given a mandate 
in order to preserve all of these rocks. So the building is designed and built around the environment. In fact, some of the buildings, they even further enhance the flora and fauna. Here is another example. It looks like any other building site, correct? But if you keenly watch, these trees are all well grown. And there is a roof here on the bottom of the slide. So the trees are on one level below. The trees were all not disturbed at all. These well-grown trees were all preserved. Next, as the summer has already arrived in India, correct? In a couple of weeks from now, every newspaper you take it in the morning, the headline will read like this. The Pune city has registered the highest temperature in the last years. And every summer, this has become a routine. Because every single day, we are adding more and more buildings, concrete. So as we add more and more buildings, more and more construction material, they are going to absorb enormous amount of heat and re-radiate back into our microclimate. Here are all the green ideas. Instead of having a conventional concrete or a tar around all of our colonies or our buildings, you can go in for open grid pavers, which you are able to see it on my right, extreme right hand side of my slide. These open grid pavers are having greenery in between them. Or even if you are not able to do that, the roads and the pathways can be covered with the beautiful trees, which gives a beautiful canopy. Choose the plants which are native to our climatic conditions so that they can shade the buildings and the built environment below. And even the roof, the topmost roof surface is the one which has been exposed to the worst ambient conditions outside during the summer months. So here is a very unique paint, what we call it is a high albedo paint which has been painted on the roof surface so that it doesn't allow the heat to come into my building so that I need not have any air conditioner at all. In some of the buildings, even the topmost roof has been covered with green roof, greenery, so that this mitigates the heat rise or temperature rising in my microclimate. If you are not still convinced, here is an another cool idea. Here is a bungalow in down south in one of the architects' bungalow wherein they are growing paddy on top of the roof. Can you believe it? We call it of the roof that grows rice. So here is a beautiful example wherein it completely prevents my roof getting exposed to the worst ambient conditions outside as well as it is able to give me a paddy and rice. So it ensures the food security of our country as well. So next is the biggest pollution is pollution created or from the fossil fuel driven vehicles, be it a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler. Here, the penetration of electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles are on the rise, though the India is far behind. From in compared to the last year, globally, we today we have 1.25 million electric driven cars in the whole world, whole world. There is a growth of 40 percent. You are able to see there is no exhaust pipe in this electric driven vehicles. So it is environmentally benign. Another idea here is even these vehicles require electricity. This electricity can be harvested from the solar energy, which becomes a part of the solar PV, becomes a car parking shed. It has been beautifully designed in the form of a butterfly wing. You are able to see this. So the solar energy is being harnessed and then is used for charging these electric driven vehicles. That is all about on the sustainable side. Next is on water efficiency. There is no substitute for water. So there is no substitute for water. So here, what are the new ideas? Here we recommend every tap to be fitted with aerator, which is much smaller than this bottle, water bottle cap, and which is not going to cost more than this water bottle. I have paid 20 rupees for this water bottle today morning. But this aerator, which is small in size, is only 15 rupees. But it is small in size, but very big in impact. When I fit this aerator into my tap, it produces almost 40 to 50 percent of my water flow through the tap, as you are able to see, without compromising on my comfort. Next is on flushes. Ten years ago, after using the washroom, you press the button, 15 to 20 liters are being used to flush our human waste. Whereas today we are talking about two liters for liquid waste and four liters for the solid waste. Next to the beauty is water-free fixtures. This is in our own center in Hyderabad. We installed it in way back in 2002. 
still it is working effectively. It doesn't even have a plumbing line, doesn't require water at all to take away the entire urinal. So by going for an ultra low flow fixtures, we are able to save almost 40 to 50 percent reduction in water consumption. Here is a beautiful classical idea. When we said we wanted to save energy in one of the green homes, they preserved the entire God's free water which comes as a form, form of a rainwater. Instead of having the rainwater some elsewhere, this green enthusiast, what he did was he has stored the rainwater in the sump below the living room. So we were exploring how do we lift the water from the sump below to the surface. So we said that conventionally people would have put a motor, correct? Whereas here is a man, he has put a hand pump. So he was going for a gym earlier. Now he doesn't go to the gym. When he asked him why, instead of going and lifting a weight in a gym alongside a strangers, here is a guy who comes to the kitchen every single day, does the same weight lifting standing next to his spouse. So the bondage has also improved upon. The happiness index in the family has gone a notch up. So this is a cool idea. It is not in one house. Many houses are doing this. Next element to say water is a beautiful idea. If you ask me how much water I have consumed in the hotel room to take a shave and a shower today morning, I don't have an answer. Because since I paid 5,000 rupees as a hotel rent for a night, I switch on the showers and then I become a bathroom singer, correct? I keep on singing. The shower is on and on and on. I don't know how much water I consume for taking a shower in the morning. Whereas if you ask me how much petrol I have put in into my bike or a car today morning, I know to the last decimal. Because I see the meter every time when I'm paying 100 rupees. So I ensure that I get 100 rupees worth of petrol or a diesel. So here is a, another cool idea wherein the water flow meters are located in the entrance of every washroom in this green apartment. Can you believe it? Before I go to a shower, take a shower, I see the meter reading is 100. When I come back after doing all the stuff inside the washroom, if it reads 200, I have consumed how much? 100 liters. So by having a simple measurement, that is what we say in the Indian proverb, correct? The old, day, old age proverb says, what is being measured can be managed. What is being measured very well can be managed very well. By simply measuring and monitoring, this green apartment is able to reduce the water consumption by 50 percentage. On a lighter side, we call this numbers as a bathroom singing index. When we generate enormous amount of waste water in our house and office and elsewhere, how do we treat it? Conventional idea is use a sewage treatment plant which uses enormous amount of chemicals, enormous amount of power, whereas here is a natural way of treating it. The natural sewage treatment plant, we call it as a phytoremediation. Somebody who has not seen it, we may look like, this may look like a not so well maintained landscape, correct? But these plants, what we consider as a waste in the wastewater becomes a food for these guys, so they completely purify the entire water and it becomes a clear portable water on the other side. Somebody may still say that I don't have that much amount of space. Here is another cool idea. In this house, which is a green home certified by us, they have used the compound wall as a sewage treatment plant. Can you believe it? Except for the urinal and the WC water, the entire water generated in the kitchen sink, washing machines, all getting treated on the compound wall of this green home. So that is on the water. Next is on energy. Energy here, you are able to bring in contemporary change in the way in which the buildings and the building materials. In fact, we would love to say that the entire market is being, being transformed. You are able to bring in more and more newer products. For example, here is a beautiful wall made out of two layers of a wall with air in between. It is done in a small house in a village. Can you believe it? And based on the success story, many buildings across the country have started adopted it. And having a green, green roof, it reduces the energy demand substantially, substantially low. This is another cool idea here. When water, oil, gas can travel in pipe, why not sunlight? Then came the sun pipes. This is a small pipe, as we are able to see it, which carries the sunlight to the highly reflective medium inside the pipe after having a multiple reflections. 
it becomes like a beautiful light. If I not told you, you see this picture, it looks like an artificial light going, glowing, correct? But not actually an artificial light. It is a natural sunlight brought in deep inside my house and in my office so that we can completely avoid the artificial light during the daytime. Green buildings also embrace renewable energy sources. For example, if you ask me whether wall can generate electricity, the roof can generate electricity, the answer is yes. You see the first picture, it looks like a black band of a wall, correct? It looks like a wall, but it's not a wall. We call it as a building integrated solar PV, photovoltaic. Photovoltaic panels act like a wall and a roof, as well as it generates electricity. Here we do have micro wind turbines all along the parapet wall. Every house in India, we have a dish, dish antenna, correct? You are able to see, hope you are able to see it in the picture on the bottom. So we have a slightly bigger than the dish antenna size, which has a micro wind as well as a solar PV, which can meet at least 40% of our energy in our house. Here is an another case. The hot water generated in this office is used for cooling. Can you believe it? Heating is used for cooling in this office places using the vapor absorption machines. Here is another example, classical example, how we can segregate the organic waste in a kitchen in a big residential complex, and then it is able to generate biogas and come back to my own kitchen as a biogas in a pipe connection. So many of the Indian houses which has the facility of this, they are able to replace two conventional fossil fuel based cylinders in a year. So what we consider as a waste in the kitchen comes back me, to me as a resource in the form of a gas. Next is on materials. There is nothing called waste in the nature. Here is a beautiful green building wherein they have taken the old railway sleepers. Earlier railway sleepers are all made out of teak wood. 100, 150 year old teak woods are taken from an auction and then it has become a building envelope. They not stopped it here. The packaging wood, you get machineries with a beautiful pine wood as a packaging material. The packaging wood has been converted into a modular furniture and a false ceiling. So every industrial byproduct or a waste material, there is somebody else sees that as a resource. A fly ash from a power plant can be converted as a cement or a block. A consumer waste product like a pet bottle or a tetra pack can be converted into a table top. So there are n number of options available. This building has not even generated one milligram of construction waste. Handling construction waste across the world is very, very tough, challenging job. Here is a case wherein they have not even generated one milligram of waste while constructing this house, and they have done it in 17 days by using a prefabricated assembly is all assembled, the entire house is assembled at site. The last one is on the indoor environmental quality. Many of us would have experienced this. You walk into a cinema hall to watch a movie. After the end of the movie, you pick up some kind of a headache or uneasiness comes in, correct? Many a times we blame the quality of the movie, correct? You have chosen one of the lousiest movie ever produced on the earth. May not be the reason. There won't be any fresh air. If there is no fresh air available in that hall, that could be one of the reasons. So green buildings encourage bringing in more and more fresh air. The green buildings are not only encouraging energy-friendly techniques, environment-friendly techniques. It also encourages people-friendly techniques like all the finishing products, like your paint, adhesives, the furnitures, the plywoods, all of them should go green. Their options are available. And then daylight and views is being encouraged. So when you walk into an office or a home, it should be completely flooded with daylight. Ironically, there was a medical journal article which we read very recently. Some of the Indians are having a deficiency in vitamin D. Can you believe it? What is the source for vitamin D? Sunlight. Sunlight is available in abundance in India 360 days in a year. But still, some of us are not exposing our skin to the daylight. So the green buildings encourages a beautiful design which brings in enormous amount of light as well as provides a connectivity to the external world. And the green buildings also encourage us from moving from doing less of bad to more of good. So when you do more of these green ideas, your energy demand comes down drastically low. Having brought down the energy demand as low as possible, 
the entire energy demand is met by the solar energy is located in these buildings. We call these buildings as net zero energy buildings. In my opinion, I call these buildings no more as a building actually. We call them as a power plant because they produce more power than what they require and export the surplus power available. So by going green and adopting these measures, buildings are able to save substantial amount of energy, water, as well as diverting the construction waste reaching on the landfill. So what it began as one building from our own center in year 2001, IGBC's headquarters with only 20,000 square feet, it has become a big movement. India today has 4.5 billion square feet of space going green with us and stands number two in the whole world. And this, <laughs> and then this, this, belongs to, this belongs to the entire, entire, entire stakeholders. This belongs to the entire stakeholders in the country. So the Indian, Indian stakeholder construction industry has showcased or demonstrated tradition and technology can coexist. When you walk into this building, our own building, when we all of us, when we walk into our own green building or any other green building certified by us in the country, we go through the central courtyard. We are plunged into the sunlight given through the glasses, beautiful glasses. We breathe the fresh air. When we do all of this, we feel that we walk walk into history actually, we walk into history. So this is what we want each one of you here present here or listening to the presentation to embrace, embrace the green concepts and involve in the green building movement and inspire millions of people and it also gives us a sense of a contributor, contribution towards our society and mother earth, mother earth. The good news here is 70% of India is yet to be built. So this gives a great opportunity for every single individual in this hall and away from this hall, irrespective of your own profession. So all of us can contribute in making the planet a much better place to live in. So as our own father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi said, we do not inherit Mother Earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. So that says it all, let us all go green. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity.